Uh, I've been just mainly doing my schoolwork and uh, going like into my backyard to like work out and stuff like that. So everybody getting some sunshine? Yeah. Okay, good. It's important. Um, Matt. I like that blue rag. Matt Ward. Uh, I've just been like working out, hanging out with family, chilling. That's it, mainly. Kelly. Oh, uh, you. Yeah. Hey, that's Kaiser. Computer. Hey there. I just been doing like my homework and like I had some Zoom calls with my baseball team just to stay in touch. And that's pretty much it. Excellent. So, uh, Tyson, you got a haircut before the sit down, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just one out of all of us. It's been rough. Um, has anybody else uh, not gone yet? I think I see an iPhone in the corner. Black do rag. I can't see this. Is my screen's messed up? <clears throat> um, I've just been working out and doing schoolwork really, and looking more into college and stuff like that. Like my opportunities. Excellent. Eureka Thurman. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is my mom's account, but uh, I've been working out and just uh keeping in touch with my friends and my family. Um, uh, yeah, basically that's it. Okay. Joey King. That's Austin and Christian. Okay. Your mic's off if you didn't know. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll see. Oh, there we go. I'm muted there. Austin Christian. What did you got? Okay, we'll come back to y'all. Did anybody else uh, not share and was we'll, willing to step up and share? Uh, I haven't shared yet. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Mateo Brandon, but when I logged in, they put my number as the as the password for the video. Okay. Um, and for me as well, my number is the. Uh, over the over the course of this quarantine, I've just been keeping up with schoolwork and trying to read as much as I can and being healthy. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been just trying to have a good pacing plan and just, but not too much so I don't get burned out. Is that email? <laughs> yeah, this is email. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we'll, um, we'll cap off there. I want to thank everybody who shared. Um, one thing I want everybody to note, um, for something that you heard that could be used as mentally stimulating, something you can use to exercise mentally boss that your peers have shared. I, um, I encourage and I recommend you, recommend that you um, look into another activity, you know? Um, it's really hard being in the house for this long. And as I'm sure you guys have a lot of energy, it's just really good to kind of diversify your different ways of just staying, you know, mentally stimulated during this time. Um, and actually, I'm so sorry. I would actually like to introduce Marcus. I'm not sure if you've actually been introduced yet. Do you want to give a quick little introduction? It's good to hear everybody. Let me uh, just share my video for a moment. Um, <clears throat> hey guys, the uh, Everett and I have uh, worked together. Mr. Glenn and I have worked together um, for a few years and he's asked me to come on and, and help uh, with the operation so we can uh, take boss from good to great. And, uh, you know, it takes a team in order to do that. We're all athletes, so, you know, you got to play together and that's what we're here to do is to add my two cents to what's going on. It's good to hear all of you guys and I'm sure I'll get a chance to uh, talk with you further. Excellent, thank you, Marcus. Um, so before um, we transition, I just want to quickly note, again, going back to the time we're in, um, for all you young men in this group chat or in this video call, um, 
as I said before, a lot's going on in this world. And there's a lot of new strains and pressures that are being put on to families, um, communities. And it's really important during this time, one, that we stay mentally bossed. We exercise our mental capacity as much as possible. But um, I really just want to speak on behalf of the people who are experiencing a lot of tension, frustration, and anger during this time. Um, as young men, I know it's hard sometimes being in a household and sometimes the struggles and frustrations and anger of our parents and what's going on with them financially, spiritually, mentally, physically, um, can sometimes outwardly put onto the kids, to you guys. Um, and so I just wanna take this time to kind of just recognize that and just one, remind you that to acknowledge the pressure and what's going on, to know that in no way, shape or form is it your fault and that however it's being acted upon or however it's being received, you have to know that it, it, does, it has nothing to do with you, you know? And then um, with that, I just really wanna encourage you guys as the young men um, during this time to really step up. You know that a lot's going on in the world, a lot of pressures are being placed upon your families. Um, it's important that you kind of step up and that may look like, you know, washing dishes, you know, when you don't necessarily want to, cleaning up, making sure you can do things for your parents without them having to ask you. Um, but yeah, I just really want to encourage that um, because you know we're all a family and the only way we're gonna make this make it through this is together. Um, but yeah, with that being said, um, we can start to transition out of check-in. Yeah, I would like to um, to jump in, uh, guys, and uh, acknowledge uh, what the guys were doing um, before school started up. We had about a month lag, right? And so we uh, developed a math competition uh, using Dreambox, and uh, in a month, uh, the guys spent over 400 hours uh, working on math. What do you do? Can you hear me, Atoba? I can. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just snapping. That's a lot. So they spent over 400 hours on math. They completed about 1,500 math lessons. Uh, I think the growth was about 33% on average. And on average, they became proficient in four new math standards, right? And uh, we had we had the competition on the middle school and the high school level, and we rewarded everybody that participated, and everybody except our top three guys get gift cards, and they should have received those already. Our, our winners at the middle school level our first place winner uh, is uh, none other than Darius uh, D. Nice Williams. Uh, uh, number two, I don't see, I don't know, Peter's on here, I think, Peter Nawaba. You guys haven't met Peter. Peter's joined us since the school year. He's an eighth grader at Jefferson uh, in Long Beach. And then our third place winner at the middle school level is uh, Donovan Pitts. Uh, so Darius, did you get your check, Darius? Um, no, not yet. My mom okay, said so Darius got a two hundred fifty dollar check coming in the mail. Oh yeah, that's right. And, uh, and Peter's got a hundred and fifty dollars, and Donovan has got a hundred dollars. And at the uh, high school level, uh, Dylan Ballard he blew it out. The water, they say. He blew it out the water. He he was uh, you was just doing it, man. <laughs> uh, and probably because he's been homeschooled already, right? So he's used to being online and doing stuff like this. But Dylan, you did the yeoman's job, and you were followed closely by Matt Ward. Uh, so Matt got a check in the mail, and then Noe Santana. Uh, is our third place uh, finisher at the uh, at the high school level. So I just want to thank you guys for, because you could have been just, you know, chilling, watching video games, doing whatever, uh, but you were putting in time. And that's really what's going to make a difference in your life, ultimately, is not doing what's required.
required of you, but going the extra mile. That's what separates winners from losers is going the extra mile. So I want to congratulate all of you guys. And then I want to turn it over to Marcus so we can start the process of talking about the investment banking. But yeah, good job, guys. Excellent, excellent, guys. The um, math is a, it's a language that's universal. Um, it's interesting, I had a story. I used to be a mortgage banker with uh, a large company and we financed um, apartment buildings, investment properties, commercial properties. And one of my accounts, a lot of my business was in San Gabriel Valley. So I did a lot of business with Chinese people. And the guy called me one day and he says, Marcus, uh, my, uh, something's wrong with my interest rate. And I said, oh, okay, well, let me go check it out. So I went and got the loan documents looked at it and sure enough it was like uh, 0.25 percent more than it was supposed to be i tell him well, listen henry uh henry wong <laughs> um uh, we made a mistake he says yeah my english may be bad but my math is excellent <laughs> so uh, so math is universal anything you do with math it's uh it's an answer that's one of the things i liked about accounting so let me just give you a little background about myself and I'll get into the investment banking part. Um, I grew up here in Los Angeles. I went to um, Henry Clay Junior High and I went to Gardena High School. Uh, from there, I went to Occidental College, which is here in Los Angeles, the same school uh, President Obama went to. He was a couple of years behind me. Um, and then I went from there to USC on a full scholarship or consortium fellowship into the Masters of Business Administration program there. Uh, while I was there, um, I was probably the youngest, the youngest person in the class because most people go work for a couple of years before they come back to get a master's in business. Most schools require that, but I had been working already as an intern for a bank for two years. So, and you're gonna hear this term come up again, internship. And that internship uh, saved me a couple of years because I had already had work experience. And so they um, admitted me into the USC school. And it's an interesting story when we're talking about investment banking because when I was there, um, I was interested in investment banking. And um, most of the big investment banks never come, came to the West Coast. This is like 33 years ago, 36 years, wow. Um, so many of them never came to the West Coast. And this was one of the first years they came to the West Coast recruiting. And of course, USC was a, a big school, so it caught their attention to come to USC. And I was there at the time and I went and interviewed. Um, and so they had offered me to come back to New York. So they were flying me out there with a ticket. They were putting me up at the Waldorf Astoria. Um, and so I went to my professor, my finance professor, and I told him, well, you know, I'm gonna have to miss your class because I'm going out here to, to this interview. And he, he's an older white guy. And uh, he kind of looked at me because it was kind of strange, I guess, being black, because there weren't that many blacks in our class. Um, and they were inviting me. He said, well, I mean, you're going to be competing against guys from Harvard and Yale, and many of them have uncles or fathers that are in Fortune 500 companies. And what are you going to have to bring to the table? I didn't answer him, but I said, I don't know, but I'm going to the table. Um, and so when I went there, one of the things that's interesting is a guy, they, Solomon Brothers, they're gone now, but at the time they were like the biggest trading house, bond trading house there was. And they had these two floors and it was a, just a huge trading room. So I went in to interview with this guy and, you know, he was an older white guy. He was sitting at his desk smoking a cigar with his feet on his desk. So I didn't think nothing of it. And he said, yeah, you know, you look like one of those guys that's got to be right all the time. 
I didn't answer him. I just said, he says, but let me tell you something. In this business, you only have to be right 51% of the time and you'll make more money uh, than you ever thought. So um, my only issue was I didn't like New York. I didn't like the East Coast. So instead of going into investment banking, um, I went into mortgage banking. But I, I'm going to share uh, my screen for a moment. And um, go here to a slideshow real quick, and we'll just go through a little bit uh, of this. Can you see the uh, investment banking path? What is investment banking? Um, Investment banking is quite simply, it helps company invest their assets to increase the value of their portfolios. So um, you hear about companies going public, uh, issuing shares to the market, uh, that's investment banking. A lot of those are called new issues. Um, investment banking, they also do debt offerings. Uh, that's called um, basically uh, bonds. So bonds are just debts. And so investment bankers help companies uh, raise money. The career track um, for an investment banker many times is college. Most of you, 99% of the time it's college and many 90% of the time it's uh, graduate school as well. Um, Investment banking positions, you got uh, the analysts, they do, they, they put grunt there and that's exactly what it is. They, they crunch all the numbers. They back again to math, you know, rates of return, uh, future value, uh, discounted value. You say a value is going to be worth this in 10 years. Okay. And with a 10% interest rate, what is the present value of that? So you have to do a whole lot of calculations about discounting that future value because you know money in the future is not worth the same as it is today. Many of you can even attest, you know, 10, 15 years ago what you could buy for five dollars and what you can buy for five dollars now. That's called inflation. Associates, uh, that's a step up from an analyst, you call a glorified grunt. Uh, vice presidents, they're account managers. These are the people that um, relationship managing the relationships to get the business. And uh, that's one of the things that Mr. Everett always emphasizes is that relationships are important. And as a matter of fact, when I was in banking, that was the type of banking that I was raised up in is relationship banking because uh, everything, you, money is one thing, but relationships really make the world go round. Um, You've seen a change, a trend now in investment banking, and we saw uh, over the years, a few years back uh, in 2008, when the market collapsed, what you saw was what had the result of a transition from relationship banking to transactional banking. And transactional is I just make money on this transaction. I don't really care, you know, let me profit as long as I get my commission. I don't care if it's a good loan, a bad loan, or a, a bad offering, as long as I make my commission. So that's transactional. But uh, relationships are important because that people tend to do business with people they know and like. Uh, the director, uh, these are the senior account managers. These are the ones that manage the VPs and then the managing directors. Uh, the key word there is rainmaker. They bring in the money because um, I don't care what business you're in, before you can get to the bottom line, the top line is sales. If you have no sales, then you have nothing to subtract from. Um, internships. Uh, this is how you can get into the industry. And I shared my story of trying to get an internship. Well, in, in my story of what an internship did for me um, in my career. So these are opportunities for you to to learn, uh, he says, you know, we're, we're saying here in your junior and senior year, that's exactly what I did as an undergrad. My junior year, I, I got this uh, internship 
this bank, United UCB, United California Bank, they took like 20 students nationwide, I mean statewide, and they put us on an accelerated track. Because what happened is generally people would graduate from college, undergrad, and then they would go work for a bank and be on a training program for a year to become a bank officer. Well, what they did is they took us, there's 20 of us, and in our junior and senior years, we worked full time during the summer and half time during the school year so that by the time I graduated, I was a banking officer. So I, I basically had a, a, a year jump because I was doing that work while I was an undergrad. So internships are, are very important um, and a great opportunity to meet people and for them to get to see you in action. And generally when it comes down to hiring, you know, they go with a known commodity if you've been good. Financial analysts, we kind of talked about that. Crunching numbers, equity analysis. Um, a lot of times their entry salary levels can be between 100 and $125,000. So, I mean, you're talking about competitive. It's just like going to the uh, NFL. I mean, a lot of people want to get into these few slots in these investment banking houses, but you know they take they have their pick of the litter, so the best of the best. Um, the associates, of course, excuse me, associates. Um, you know, once you become associate then uh, analyst, then you, you know, you can be uh, elevated to an associate. They generally range between one hundred and fifty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year with two to three years of experience. Uh, you know, you get an MBA. So you see a lot of these guys that come out of a business school and, and that's the kind of money they're making uh, at these firms, but they're working a lot of auto hours. I can guarantee you that. They're working, you know, 80 plus hours a week. Uh, vice presidents, the, these guys, you know, they're, they're making half a million, 650,000 or more. And then, uh, managing directors. Wow, these their life is, is, is really tied up in the business pretty much and they can make several million dollars a year. Um, some firms were partnerships, a lot of them have moved to equity ownership. So uh, investment banking, you may have heard some firms like back in the, um, I'm gonna stop sharing, back in the uh, when the collapse happened, I don't know some, how some of you are, may not even, you may have been babies, but you know, a lot of big firms have, um, Lehman Brothers was a hundred plus year old firm. Uh, Goldman Sachs is still around. These are those old money firms that, you know, are changing. And so the whole financial landscape of the banking industry has changed technology, um, has made it uh, simpler. I remember um, when I was in undergrad, <laughs> 35, 38 years ago, I wrote my thesis in economics on bank holding companies as a part of uh, interstate banking. And uh, we were talking about, because at that time, the bank I worked at was on 54th and Crenshaw. It was a UCB branch. And it was one of the first branches that when they start putting teller machines, you guys just take them for granted. But I remember when they first bought the first teller machine and how much money they lost and learning all of that. So that whole thing of going from cash to a card society has been uh, projected for you know, 35 plus 40 years. And here we are. And it creates opportunities um, that it creates opportunities that didn't exist before, and any time opportunities are there, and any time there's... Sorry to interrupt, Marcus. Aaron, can you please uh, mute your mic? I muted him. Thank you. Um, anytime you have calamity, there's opportunity. In Chinese, the character for danger is the same character for opportunity. It's the same character. So it's just a matter of how you look at it. 
and what you're looking at. And so that's one of the things I want to leave you with is um, there's always an opportunity in there. I'll share a little quick joke with you. <laughs> they were doing a, a study of what motivates an optimist and what motivates a pessimist. And so they had these identical twins. One was an optimist and one was a pessimist. So they took the pessimist kid. And if you don't know what a pessimist, that's somebody that's not optimistic. Um, so they took, put him in a room full of toys, every toy you could imagine, the best toys, video games and everything. And they came back 30 minutes later and he was just sitting there and they said, hey kid, why won't you play with these toys? Oh, no, they'll just break. Go ahead, try it. Oh, no, I won't have any fun. And he never did play with the toys. They put the optimist kid in a room full of manure. It was like high, stacked with manure, just full of manure. And they came back about an hour later, and they didn't see him. They said, kid, are you in here? And he popped up, and manure was in his hands, in his hair, and everything. And said, well, what are you doing? He says, well, with all this manure in here, there's got to be a pony somewhere, and I'm going to find him. <laughs> so whatever you're facing, we know that we face odds that are against us. The, the odds are against us. But when you're facing the odds, you got to be looking for an opportunity. you got to believe, and you got to have a plan, and you got to be focused on what it is you want to accomplish. So um, that's part of the investment banking setup. We're going to have a guest speaker that's going to join us here. Um, what time do we have? I'm sorry. He's going to join us in 20 minutes. But um, I guess I didn't go as long as I could have ever. But um, that's a background for investment banking. Um, my experience was in, I chose to go into mortgage banking. The hours were better on the West Coast. I had a young family. I didn't want to move to the East. Um, and, you know, I had a good career in mortgage banking. We financed, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars of real estate. You know, well, not a hundred billion, probably about 50 billion in real estate. <laughs> I don't want to exaggerate, but 50 billion in real estate over a small career career so uh any questions there's a chat um section there um that if you want to ask questions you can type just so we also for some uh, housekeeping for when our guest comes on um the chat is where you can ask questions when you do a chat you can do it to everyone um and then we get it or if you want to you see that where it says chat you hit it up a a, a screen will come up and it'll ask you to who. You can uh, chat privately to someone or uh, you could chat to everyone. If you have a question, just uh, write it in there and we'll, we'll, we'll bring them up to him in an orderly fashion. So that's a little bit of the housekeeping. Um, Excellent. Can we, um, can we actually get some, some engagement, some takeaways? Did anybody uh, learn or take away anything from that that they want to share to the group? I'm going to call names. Um, I hey, learned that. Oh, there we go. There you go. You good. I learned that like, internships are really important through college so that you could, you could use that under as like work time and stuff so you can get into your career. Excellent. Excellent. Jacob, you got anything? Uh, I learned that it's like a very wealthy career and like there's a lot, a lot of money involved and it's very important. Excellent. So uh, Marcus, I have a follow-up question. Um, hey, Mike. For everybody in this group chat um, at their particular age and stage and um, their progression, how can they start to get um, familiar, start to enter that career path? What little things can they do now that can prepare them for entering that? Well, uh, first thing is excel in your school. 
I mean, everything is built upon the previous step. So focus on the step where you are. Be, I think, uh, you know, it was said before about doing something extra. What's the difference between extraordinary and ordinary? Mm. It's just a little extra. <laughs> yeah. And so if you want to be extraordinary, you do that extra that, as they've been admonishing you. We're not, we're talking about principles that are tried and true. So math, I mean, you got to be good at math because you got to be able to count. And you don't, you think, well, you know, this geometry or this algebra is not, you know, what am I going to use this in life? You will use algebra investment banking when you start trying to calculate present values and future values, discounted values. And that's how value is counted, right? It's, it's math. So that was the beautiful thing about the math, math madness. Do your math. Um, you got to be a good writer, you know, so you, you got to master um, being able to communicate in writing, you know, and, and the difference between just creative writing and business writing, business writing is getting to the point, Objective. <laughs> you know, is using as few as words as possible because you're talking about people that don't have a lot of time. They want to get it, you know, in, in right. the first few sentences. So I would say focus on your writing and your math, and then you can begin to learn about money. I mean, you guys can learn anything with the YouTube. I mean, we used to have to get up. <laughs> we used to have to get up and go to the library and go through the Dewey Decimal cards. Talk to the library. Right, thank you. <laughs> and then go find a book. But you can get all of that from right now. What does it take to just do a search? I want to be an investment banker. Um, and you're going to learn about money. Some of the things you can begin to start is to start with your own savings account. You know, just start a, a, a habit of every time you get some money, save some money. Pay yourself first. Every time you get some money, save some money. It's the book called The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Get that book. Pay yourself first. Now, I'm, I'm a believer, so I pay God first because he's the source. I pay him, and I'm right behind him. When I pay him, I pay me. I pay him, then I pay me. Then I pay everybody else. And that's just some of the principles that you begin. But I always had an interest in money. So if you have an interest, then pursue it. It's a long answer, but I hope it got there. Okay. See, one of the things I learned is that so you can make, you can make a pro athlete kind of money being an investment banker, right? You don't have to go pro in sports to make six, seven figures. You can go pro as an investment banker. In fact, uh, the gentleman who's going to be joining us, Mike Haddix, his dad was a first round pick in the 1983 in NFL draft. And, but the son, now the son is an investment banker, but the dad played sports. So yeah. one of the things I learned is you can make sports kind of money in investment banking. So you don't have to grow up to be Michael. You can grow up to be, you know, Michael Haddix, the investment banker, not Michael Jordan, the basketball player. <laughs> and just, uh, yeah, excellent. And just to piggyback off of Marcus, um, one thing, one of my favorite quotes and one thing that I kind of really hold true to myself is um, what you pay attention to grows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And during this time, you know, like, and it, what's so what's so incredible about that quote is like oftentimes we think we have to put extraneous hours into something every single day and in order to be a master really quick that is true but um during times like this where we're just you know we just we have a lot of time that we've never really had before in this way even if you guys spend 10 minutes 10 minutes a day for a month for a year focusing on something like that's growth so um, well, you pay attention to grow. So whatever you guys decide to put your energy and attention towards during this time, expect with consistency and with discipline, you're going to, you're going to improve drastically. Um, so, you know, a little homework assignment, just find something to pay attention to and discipline yourself to work on it every day and watch what it, watch what happens with it. Good. The, um, the challenge that we all have is that, 
you know, they when they talk about all of this money in sports, you know, they talk about that, but we don't know about all the other money to be made in different professions. You don't have to, like Edward was saying, you don't have to be a, and you're going to have a longer career. You know, I mean, you can make that kind of money and do it longer and, and not beat up your body, you know, and um, then you can leverage that into something else. I mean, because a lot of people in investment banking, many of them go in and then they make a lot of money and they go do something else because it, it's a lot of work. I mean, when you go in and begin, trust me, they're working 70, 80 hours a week, you know, I mean, it's not no eight to five or five o'clock go home. When they're doing a deal, uh, mergers or an acquisition, uh, you know, it's it's everybody on, on board. And Mr. Glenn, he's an attorney. So, I mean, he knows that when it comes time to closing, I mean, it's not like, oh, I got to go home. <laughs> you know, we got to close. <laughs> and we got to do whatever we got to do to close if it means working all night to the next day or, or, or whatever. Uh, because... There's money involved, and the, and the whole point of all of that is that it's, um, I think someone alluded to it earlier, is about perseverance, um, sticking to it, you know, and finishing the job. And these are characteristics that you develop, you're developing now um, that are intangible, but that are essential. So um, the fact that you're taking time to be here right now and not somewhere else, it says that you, you, you're making an investment in yourself. And that's what, the, that's what the main thing is to continue to invest in yourself and, and learn, learning. Uh, Marvin Bishop, are you on? Marvin Bishop, can you hear me? Uh, he doesn't have his sound connected. Huh? He doesn't have his sound connected. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just talked to Mike. He's 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 on standby to join us in ten minutes. Okay. Uh, Mike Haddix, but I wanted yes. Marvin if he could. Uh, but he doesn't have his sound. No, he doesn't have his sound enabled. So maybe he didn't hit the right button. Um, you know, when the in audio it says enable audio. Okay. I just text him. Yeah. But um, I could keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we're, we're, I'm from LA, so, you know, I grew up playing with the Watch Wildcats, <laughs> we're a Pop Warner team in Watch. Um, and there was a, a football player, Kermit Alexander. He was a, cornerback for the Rams. The Rams were in L.A. at the time. This is obviously about 40 years ago. More than that, 50 years ago. Um, wow, 50. Anyway, these guys, they organized us into a team. And that's the same thing. You guys are athletes. I mean, I wasn't a good at. I learned early I wasn't going to be that good. I could catch the ball, but I wasn't going to outrun anybody. So, they just made me a lineman. And then, you know, by the time I got to high school, I only weighed 142. So I was like, well, this, this, I, I'm, I'm not even going to try to put the team. Um, but I did learn a lot about discipline, showing up, uh, working out, teamwork. Um, and those skills, I mean, those are universal, you know. But when you're thinking about your careers, you got to think, long term and um that's one of the things when i was looking up about our guest speaker that um, i was really impressed with because um in looking at how he presents his company and how he looks at uh, working with athletes this thing is to give you unvarnished advice without any financial incentive and i thought that's a great business model um, because, you know, everybody here that wants to go after what they think are the dollars. 
but he seems to be a, a man that's focused on giving advice about what's next. And, um, and that's where you always have to focus. I mean, because if you're in junior high, okay, what's next? But you got to prepare now for what's next because there's things called prerequisites. You can't get into certain classes unless you've done the prerequisites, which means requirements. So uh, I'll emphasize again your math. You can't do algebra in the eighth grade, then it, it just throws you off. All you got to do is be off just a little bit, and down the road, you're going to be off way. Out of the out of the out of the picture. So focus on your math because your career right now is academic. Your your academic career. I mean, you got two. <laughs> and and whenever it came to speak to the group that I, I I have a group of boys we mentor. They're not athletes. They're just you know regular kids. It cracked me up because he said, um, you know, if you you got to get into a college if you want to particularly football you got to generally get into a d1 school or a high level school in order to be seen or be considered and in order to get into school he said you, you know you're not going to get into usc with a d average <laughs> i don't care if you can run through a brick wall and um that is your key so you're working on two your your academics and your athletic ability. So Marcus, uh, Michael is uh, with us. So if you wanted to start with that video and then okay, turn it over to thank you. Michael Haddix has joined us. OK, welcome. OK, uh, Matt, uh, Michael, thank you for joining us. I'm going to do a little introduction right quick. I'm going to share my screen. So, um, this is the website for uh, Michael's company, uh, Empowered. I like it. Educate, empower, and elevate. Um, I went through, and this was a great. I, it was a great article. I suggest it, all of you read it. Uh, but under the blueprint, it talks about the parent experience and what to expect. When your or when your son or daughter to go pro, when you expect them to go pro, and he has a lot of great articles in there uh, that you can look at. Uh, yes, sir. And one of the things he talked about is leverage for now, and and I'm going to play this, and then the next voice you're going to hear is. is, is Michael himself. Marcus. Yes. Can you hang on just a second? We have a visitor uh, Zoom bombing us, Marvell Tail. He's with the Indianapolis Post to say hey to the guys. Hey, what's going on, Who is this? My name is Marvell Tail. Okay. Can you put it back at the other screen so the kids can see him? Okay, hold on. Let me in that. Thank you. All right. How are everybody doing? So where is Marvell at? He's down here in the lower left. Okay, can you can you focus him so everybody can see him like we saw you? Okay, hold on. And then the other guy, Kathy, uh, the other kid, the uh, banner. Zach, is he is he around? Um, not yet. Oh, okay. Um, every uh, let me see. Okay, there you go. There we go. How are everybody doing? All right, you don't look like no football player, man. <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But I just wanted to stop by, man, and wish y'all some encouragement. Um, you know, through a hard time, y'all might be in high school, you know, trying to trying to get to the next level or just trying to get to your next year. But uh don't let this stop you. You know, don't let this slow down your 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 train process at all. Um, you know, you gotta adapt with the times. That's part of football, that's part of life. Back at the time that is going on, and uh, being able to, you know, stay strong through the pressure. Um, you know, as, as Marcus was saying earlier, you know, these prerequisites, whether it be class, 
you know, uh, or on the field, you gotta you gotta handle your prereqs. You ain't getting in all season. Yeah. Right now during quarantine, your prereqs ain't met. How you think you gonna perform? You know what I'm saying? So I just I wish y'all the best, man. I'm, you know, stay strong throughout this time. And uh good luck this year. It's all y'all. Thank you. That's real. Thank no you, Marvell. And Marvell, what, what position do you play? Play corner. Corner? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. And this is your rookie year, your second year? Second year coming up. Second year? Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, looking forward to it. Man. What happened? What college did you go to? I went to the University of Southern California, USC. Okay, okay. Fight on, fight on. Fight on. That's okay. right. <laughs> yeah. Now tell the boys you got your degree, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Real estate development. Okay, there you go. So you boss, you know that, right? You know what this program is about? Oh yeah, people like me. Okay, that's right. That's right. So you can come you can come back. We all, we all aiming to be bosses, man. That's why, right. why work for somebody else, you know? Yeah. Go, go work to get your own and provide for you. Okay. Okay. So, Mike, if you want to go back, unless is Zach is Zach joined us yet? Um, no. You guys go ahead. Thanks so much, Marvell. Yeah, thank you, Marvell. And that, Kathy, how you get the trophy, the Coliseum in the background? <laughs> oh, I was on the field one day, just took a picture, and so it's now my virtual background. <laughs> okay. Is it, um, go to Mike. Yeah. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm going to play this uh, video. I, I, I really thought it was excellent. And uh, everything about uh, his approach to the business I thought was excellent. But I'm going to share this, and then Mike, you can take it from there. Mike, excuse me, I don't mean to call you Mike. Mike, you can take it from there. All good. Thank you, thank you for having me. You know, I appreciate it. Um, you know, it's, it's the easiest way to sort of start with my background and a little bit of, about how I uh, how I got started and what I'm doing now. Is, is that the best day to start? Yes, Absolutely. it's just four. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so my quick background is uh, I grew up outside of Philadelphia. Um, ended up playing college basketball. I played at a small D1 school, um, Siena College in upstate New York. Uh, my pop actually played in the NFL for eight years, so I got a chance to see. Um, he was the top 10 pick in the NFL draft as a running back. Um, so got a chance to see, you know, the good and the bad side of, of sports. You know, how you, what you should be doing while you're playing because it's going to end for everybody at some point. So I got a chance to, to, to see both sides of that. I went on to play college basketball. Um, had a great career. I scored almost 2,000 points in college. Um, actually, when I got done, um, was debating playing overseas um, and, and actually worked out for a few NFL teams to be a tight end. Um, you know, ended up sort of going to, you know, I had an opportunity to play a contract to play in Spain, but ended up um, staying here and, and starting to work. I uh, ended up getting my, my graduate degree from Columbia Business School. So there's um, there's two really famous alumni from Columbia Business School. So the first is Warren Buffett. I don't know if you guys have heard of Warren Buffett, but he's a, he's an alumni at Columbia Business School. And the second um, is a guy by the name of Robert Smith. So I don't know if you guys saw about a year ago, um, there was a, you know, a guy who went in front of went to Morehouse graduation, spoke to their graduate graduating class, and he's a billionaire and told them, um, he's a, you know, he's a black billionaire, one of the richest black men in the, in the world. He told them that he would pay every single person student loans in that audience. So he's worth about, you know, four or five billion dollars. He's another graduate of Columbia Business School. 
Um, I got done Columbia and then I went and worked on Wall Street. We'll talk about that a little bit today. I was an investment banker. Um, I did mergers and acquisitions, um, you know, did that for a few years and then left and had a bunch of contacts and, uh, and friends and family that were in, in, in and around sports, which you guys will have as you sort of go through this process. And I wanted to help them figure out, you know, the business and finance of sports um, from somebody that really cared about them. So I, I worked at a division of Octagon Sports. So I was a financial advisor for athletes. So some of my clients were Steph Curry, um, Miles Jack, uh, Chris Paul, Giannis, Devin Booker. Um, and we, we had a, a pretty good group of guys that we worked with and did their finances, helped them do business deals on a daily basis. And, and I started my company about three years ago. So uh, Empowered, as I saw in the video, um, we do, uh, we work with professional athletes and we work with teams and leagues and we help teach players about business. So, you know, players, you see guys like LeBron James and even Magic Johnson that are involved in a lot of different businesses. So what we do is we help them figure it out. So we go to colleges. So I go to Kentucky basketball as a client of mine. I sit in a room and I talk to those players about the fact that they are a Kentucky basketball player. How are they taking advantage of it? You know, what are they doing while they're playing there to meet people to get resources to prepare for the next level. And then if you know, they're fortunate enough to have a chance to be a millionaire, are they ready for that? Do they know how, do they know how the money works? Do they know how to not get taken advantage of? Because a lot of people out here um, are looking to take advantage of guys. So we teach that to, um, to a lot of the, the colleges, college basketball and football teams. And we work with teams like the Oakland Raiders, the New York Giants, Miami Dolphins, um, Detroit Pistons, Washington Wizards, and the NBA and NFL as a whole. We do the same thing with those players. We teach them how to build businesses, how to learn about things like investment banking, uh, real estate development. So Marvell said, you know, he was a real estate development uh, major. So we do some, we do dinners and help teach players that you want to go be, you know, be a real estate developer. Um, and how, how do you do that stuff? And we have some people that we work with. Um, I don't know if you guys know somebody by named David Gross. He did a lot of stuff um, in LA with Nipsey Hussle. Um, he's a close friend of mine. So, you know, we, he comes and helps us teach some classes due to our players. Um, and we want to make sure guys are on the right track. So, so that's sort of my background. Um, you know, I know we're going to talk a little bit about uh, investment banking today, uh, but but I'll also say if you guys have questions about any of this stuff, um, you know, I've had I've done a lot of different things and you know met met some cool people and got a chance to see the inside of the business of sports and to see why you know some players that take advantage of it become like Magic Johnson and, and become you know real estate moguls or become like LeBron James and some players don't. Um, so, so we can talk about that stuff as well. Um, and this is casual. So if you guys have questions throughout the time that I'm talking, you know, feel free to, you know, stop me, just chime in, let me know. And I'll, uh, and I'll be happy to, to sort of expand a little bit on whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about. So, um, so Marcus, I guess, you know, for next steps, you know, you know, how should we, you know, how should we handle this? You want to open up for questions now? Do you want to you know, jump into sort of life of investment banking? Do you talk about sports a little bit? What do you think is the best Best sort of next test, Marcus or uh, or Everett. Well, I I would say that uh, you could talk about the life of an investment banker. We did a before you came on. We did a, a slideshow about investment banking career paths, associates, uh, analysts, and so those that type of thing. We gave them an idea about the type of money that can be made uh, in those areas, and so maybe you can expound on that having lived. So you, okay, so you broke up a little bit uh, towards the end, but yeah, so, so I'll jump into it. So, so yeah, I was an investment banker. I worked at a place called Lazard and then also Goldman Sachs. So life of an investment banker. So I did it, did it for uh, a little less than two years. Um, so as Marcus mentioned, there's, there's sort of levels, right? So you start out, you come in, if you do it right out of college, you come in as an analyst. What that means, you know, sort of low end of the totem pole. You know, you're doing a lot of the day-to-day -day work. You're understanding. So, you know, for example, an investment banker, right? So I'm assuming you guys have heard of Amazon and um, I'm assuming you guys have heard of a company called Whole Foods. So Amazon about six to eight months ago, they purchased Whole Foods. So they said, all right, we, you know, we, we think, you know, our company's big enough. We can buy Whole Foods and we can make a lot of things happen and make a lot of money by owning it. So when anything, you know, big companies say they want to buy other companies so they can make more money. So an investment banker, we help them do it. So what happens is, you know, if I'm in, I'll walk you through those analysts, associate, uh, vice president, and then you go like, you know, and then other places as you get hired at different levels, director, managing director, different names. 
but let's walk through that in terms of like, you know, in terms of a real deal. So Amazon says, hey, I want to buy, um, I want to buy Whole Foods. I'm going to buy Whole Foods for $50 billion. I don't know the exact numbers, but say that that's what they say. So the managing director, so the head person, the boss, or the whole group has a meeting with, with Amazon, probably meets with Jeff Bezos and says, listen, you know, what do you want to do? I want to buy it. I want, I want to buy how much you think I should buy it for. So the investment banker's job is to understand how much that company's worth. So the analyst gets the call. Hey, you know, we're, Amazon's going to buy Whole Foods. At the desk, they sit down and start going through it. All right, here's how much money Whole Foods made last year. Here's, the, here's how much their business expenses are. Here's how much they pay for salaries. Here's how much you think, you know, we think they could be worth if we buy them. If we buy them, here's the things that we need from a company. Here's the things that we don't need. How can we make it better? So the analyst is sitting there in front of an Excel spreadsheet and building out all this stuff. Sometimes 24, 48 hours straight, sitting at a desk, going through it. So they're building it all up. The next level is the associate. Um, I was an associate for a few years. So you're basically taking all that information that the analyst has sort of put on paper. You're going through it, adding some stuff, doing a little bit of double checks. And then you go meet with you know, the VP and the director. You present. You say, hey, this is what you know, we think things are worth. Here's why we did it. Here's how it worked. Um, they say, okay. You might have a question? No. Okay. Um, here's how it works. And, and, and then the managing director will go back to Jeff Bezos and say, here, we've done all of our work. Here's what we think. Here's how much we think it's worth. And then here's how you're going to buy it. You're going to take a loan out to buy it. Are you going to use some cash to buy it? Are you going to give them stock in exchange for owning the company? Um, so that's how sort of an investment banking, um, like a deal would work. On terms of day to day, I'm going to be real with you guys. You know, investment banking pays a lot of money. You can make a lot of money as an investment banker, but no one's giving out money for free. So it's hard. So, you know, there's days that I would go into investment bank, I get in at nine o'clock at night, I would stay till 10, 11, 12 at night. And it's hard work. But the money is, you know, there's a lot of money. There's an investment banker that I used to work with at, um, at Goldman Sachs. He made more money in his career than any professional athlete has ever made in the history of their career. So more than Tiger Woods, more than LeBron James, this investment banker who was in his 40s made more money than any player in the history of any professional sport. That's real money. Talking about 100 million, a couple hundred million dollars he, this guy made in a year. So that's real money from investment banking. And, and it, it is, there's opportunity out there, but it's tough because a lot of people want to do it. And I'm going to be honest, a lot of people that look and feel like me don't do this job. It's hard because we don't talk about this, right? So my parents were never investment bankers. When I, when I became an investment banker, I called my dad and was like, listen, I'm gonna be an investment banker. He didn't know what it was. So he was like, all right, you know, I think it, you know, it sounds okay, good luck. So he had no idea. And I didn't know what it was either until I got to business school. And what I realized was those people in business school, they knew this already. Yeah. Somebody had told them when they were 15, 16, when they were your age, somebody said, listen, there's a job where by the time you're 30, you can be making a couple million dollars a year and you can make it for the rest of your life. You make more than doctors, lawyers, all kinds of stuff. And somebody told them that at 15, 16. So when, when they got to college, they said, all right, you know, I'm going to be an investment banker. So we didn't have that conversation. So when I got there, you know, it was, lear it was a, a learning process, um, but sort of the day-to-day, -day, right? So I, I'll give you sort of a breakdown of, of, of the day. You know, you come in during the day and you usually have some work to do at your desk. So they say, okay, so you're in two sort of modes as an investment banker. You either have a live deal, which means, you know, that example I gave, Jeff Bezos says, hey, I'm at Whole Foods. I'm going to go buy, uh, sorry, I'm at Amazon. I'm going to go buy Whole Foods. It's a live deal. You're working it up. You're figuring out the numbers. You're crunching the numbers. You're figuring out how, how they're going to borrow $50 billion. They're going to use their bank account. What are they going to do? That's a live deal. That's probably 20, 30% of your time as an investment banker. The rest of your time in the investment banker is meeting with clients, doing research, and you're actually pitching them deals. So you would walk into a company like Nike and say, hey, Nike, so here's why you should buy these four or five companies. Here's what, would, here's what would happen if you were to buy Under Armour. Here's what would happen if you were to buy Adidas. And that's the day-to-day. -day. So you're building these models, you're crunching the numbers, and you're getting a list of possible clients. And the way it's broken up in an investment bank is there's different, there's different groups. So there's healthcare. So Johnson & Johnson, you know, Kaiser, Permanent Day, like these hospitals, big companies, that's healthcare. So when they're buying each other, you, the healthcare investment banking group is doing it. Then there's consumer group. That's all the companies you hear about. You know, the, the CVSs, the Walgreens, Ralphs, all these companies. Uh, you cover all that. That's consumer. You have technology. Those technology companies are, you know, the, the Facebooks and the Apples and all that stuff. 
and you have, even have some investment banks that focus on sports. So some investment banks focus on, hey, you want to buy a team? You go to an investment bank. Hey, how much should this team be worth? How much should this stadium be worth? If the Raiders are getting a new stadium, they're going to an investment bank to talk about it. So there's sports groups for investment banks that all they deal with is buying and selling teams and stadiums. Um, there's also investment banks that focus on casinos. You know, I cover all of Las Vegas. They say, hey, you know, my focus is buying and selling these, the hard rock and planet Hollywood and all these things. So there's different groups in investment banking. So if you got a passion for a different industry, you, know, you can go ahead and pick what that is and focus and that'll be your goal. There's real estate investment banks. There's, there's all kinds of different groups. So in one investment bank, there's probably 20 different groups. So you walk in and say, hey, you know, I want to do this. And you may say, why? You know, because I have a passion for this. I love sports or I love consumer or, you know, I love whatever you love. So you can, you can pick, uh, you know, what group you want to be in. And, and it's a good job. I mean, people do it for a long time. You make a lot of money. There's a lot of investment bankers that are retired at 40 years old that are sitting home. And, and have, you know, sitting home in a, in a $10 million, $20 million house. There's even investment banks that deal with Hollywood. So every time a, you know, when a film is, when a film is financed or, or Paramount Studios is saying, we want to go buy something, they're calling an investment bank. So there's a lot of different flexibility. And I said, if you guys are interested in, in investment banks, you, there's a few things, a few skills that are really important. Um, but as athletes, this is something that you should, you know, you should be pretty well versed in. I think the first one is attention to detail. So in everything that you do, attention to details, the one of the most important things, but in investment banking, it's a big deal. Because if you mess up a number on a spreadsheet and all of a sudden they say, hey, you know, something's supposed to cost $35 million and you put the wrong number in and it costs you 3 million, that's something to think about. The other thing is focus and you guys get this, you know, make sure when you, when you got a task at hand, if you can put your head down and knock it out, that's a big deal. The other thing about um, investment banking that people don't know and people don't talk about, so is, is, being social. So I think the one thing that will help you guys understand, I'll, and Zach, I'll, I'll get your answer in a, and, and I'll get your question in a second. The one thing people don't think about is investment banking is, you know, you may have one day where you're sitting in a room with a CEO that's worth $150 million. And then the next day you got to go talk to, um, you know, somebody on your team about how to do something. So you got to be able to communicate to a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds. And if you can do that, that's how you rise. So a lot of people at investment banking, they're really good at sitting together and putting together spreadsheets and they're, and they're really good at sitting, sitting down and, and doing the numbers, but you, they can't talk to people. If you can do that, that's how you reach the next level. So the managing directors, when you get high up in investment banking, it's less about the day-to-day -day work. You actually got to go out there and talk to the CEOs and get them to like you and say, hey, here's why we connect and here's why you should do business with us. Because when they do a deal for $50 billion, your company gets like 5% of that. And if your company gets 5% of that and you're a director, you're making it happen, you're getting a chunk of that money. So you're getting a real chunk. So it's a $50 billion deal and, and, you, know, and you get 5%, that's $2.5 billion that your company's getting and you're getting a piece of that. So there's real money um, there. So let, Zach, let me, let me jump to your question. So I don't know if everybody can see the question. It says, this was a whole new world to you. Can you speak to maybe the culture shock of going to Columbia Business School and working on Wall Street and how you grew through that? Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. So you know, I'm going to be real. So I walked in. This is first business school, so I was I was nervous. Listen, I was an athlete. You know, I didn't go to these country clubs, and I didn't go to the greatest school. So I, you know, I, I grew up playing ball. So when I got to Columbia, I was nervous. Like the day before, I did, I was like, everybody here's gonna be smarter than me. They've all done this. I have no idea how I'm gonna function here. Um, but then when I got there, we'll start with Columbia. When I got there, what I realized, um, people there weren't smarter than me, and and a lot of this stuff is not about you know you guys are all intelligent, um, and a lot of this stuff is learning how this world works early. So what I realized is I was smarter than a lot of people at Columbia, but I just realized that somebody had told them these steps to take younger and got them in those right rooms and allowed them to network. And that's how you know, they were able to open doors. So, so yeah, that was the first thing, sort of realizing that I'm just as smart and capable of being here. Um, and then the second thing is I, I started finding mentors. So I reached out to people. So I was struggling a little bit. I was like, listen, you know, especially when I was in investment banking, I was like, you know, my bosses don't look like me. They don't understand my background. I don't know if they like me. So I started reaching out to mentors, even people that didn't work, that didn't, you know, that weren't working there. I reached out to people that looked like me that had some experience in the industry and asked them how to function. So it was like, you know, you gotta get to know people and you, but you'd be surprised. You know, even the people that you think are a lot different than you, you'll find some commonalities. Um, and you guys do this all the time. You play in a sports team with people that from different neighborhoods that come from different backgrounds. And you might think, you know, you, you may have never met them, 
if you weren't playing sports. But by playing sports, you got a chance to get to know them a little bit. Um, and you realize that you, you guys are the same in a lot of different ways. So, so finding a mentor, um, being confident in yourself, understanding that you're just as capable of being there as anybody else. Um, so don't let that stuff intimidate you. And then a lot of it was, was sort of, you know, listening and learning and, and sort of being humble, um, but also using your work to show, um, to show. So you, you're not going to be buddy, buddy with everybody. So, um, so, so using your work to show your value. I uh, hope that answered your question. If, if it didn't answer your question, feel free to follow up. Okay, next question. Uh, okay. Um, so, so, you know, uh, the other thing I'll say is, you know, I think it's really important. I think the first step in, in, in making this is, is sort of a sacrifice. And you guys have made a big sacrifice being here. Um, you know, it's Saturday. You guys will be doing a lot of different things. Um, it's early, it, you know, I'm in, I'm on the uh, East coast, I'm in New York. So, um, but it's, you know, I know you guys have been on here for a while, you know, you guys could be doing a lot of different things and a lot of your friends may not be here and maybe want to do other things. So there is, you know, there is a lot to be said about what you're doing and this is the first step. So I think, you know, it's going to be hard, but you guys have shown, um, sort of the sacrifice and that's what this is. I mean, in all these things, if you want to be successful, you're going to have to do what other people won't do. And, and, and make sacrifices that other people won't. And this just shows a lot about you guys. And I think, listen, when you start going through the process, even if you, you know, think about investment banking, learning about this stuff is gonna do nothing but benefit you. But I would also tell people, so you guys are young now, but it's gonna be a point in time where you'll be talking to another investment banker. You may be looking for a job, you know, this is the first step. Don't be afraid to tell them, listen, like, I, you know, here's why I wanna be an investment banker. Because when I was in seventh grade, you know, on Saturday, I was getting up and learning about these career fields. And I learned about investment banking from the time I was in seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th grade, fifth, sixth grade, whatever grade it is. And, and that'll set you apart. So you guys are doing something that's different than everybody else out here is doing. Um, so be proud of that. This is the first step, but also use it. Have the conversation. After you get off this call, if you're still interested in investment banking, um, you know, start to kind of go through LinkedIn, look, look up people. And be like, listen, I sacrificed a Saturday to do this. This is why I'm better. People remember that stuff. And that's how you get in the door because getting a job um, is not just about your resume. It's about what can you say and why is your story and who are you? And it shows who you are. Um, the, the other thing I'll say is, um, and, and I know, you know, just from, from talking to Everett and, and some of the conversation that we've had um, and all the things that you do, um, it's about communication. Right. So, so how do you get people to sort of buy in and like you? And that's getting a job. Um, you know, that's getting recruited for whatever that next level is. You know, that's being a good teammate. That's getting your coach, you know, to, to buy into you and why, why they should be depending on you. Um, and I think this is really important to think about. I think that communication um, on all levels is really, really important. And I think let's, you know, talk about some tips there that, that I think are really important when it comes to communication and get people like you. I think the first thing is, you know, take the time to understand who you are and what you care about. That is one of the biggest things. People like people who are authentic. If you say, you know, if you're real and you say, this is why I like this and this is who I am, you know, people can see if it's true or if it's not. So being authentic is one of the biggest things and that's how you get people to buy in. So you got to know your story. What makes you different? What about you is special? And everybody in here has got something unique. So it's, it's really important to, to think through that stuff and be able to communicate it. And I think the other thing is listening. I think, you know, a lot of times we don't talk enough about listening. You know, when you're having conversations with coaches, teammates, recruiters, interviewers, all this stuff, you know, really, really think about, you know, listen to what people are saying. That's gonna help you um, to get people to buy into you. It may sound counterintuitive. You might think, hey, I just wanna talk. I gotta tell everybody think everything about me. The more you have other people talking, you know, the more they like you. People like talking about themselves. You see, I'm up here. I've been going for, for 25 minutes and I ain't stopping. I'm enjoying it. People like talking about themselves. So if you get people to talk about themselves, um, you know, you'd be surprised the traction you'll get um, with people. So we'll do a little bit of shift and feel free to keep um, keep the questions going. I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience at Octagon and, and managing players' money. So this is something that a lot of people like to talk about. Like, you know, the, the show Ballers. I don't know if you guys have seen the show Ballers, but... Um, you know, a lot of that stuff is true. So I lived it. I still live it every, you know, every now and then. Uh, but let's talk about, you know, experience with, with, with players making money. I think it's interesting. So now I work with guys who made 20, 30, 40 million dollars a year. You know, Steph Curry is one of my clients. He made 60 million dollars a year in endorsement money. 
So, you know, real money. So, you know, there's some interesting things that happen, but I also think there's a lot of lessons that apply to everybody. Um, so, you know, the one thing is, um, and, Mar and Marvell that came on here, um, you know, talked about, you know, real estate development and, you know, he's a young guy in the league. I think the one thing um, is we don't talk about money enough, right? So my parents are from a small town, Mississippi. And, and a lot of the stuff that we talked about was everything except for money. So what I realized in a lot of players I work with are the same as me. You know, they were coming from, you know, you're 20 years old, you get a lot of money in your pocket and you're sort of figuring it out. And, and sports is, is an interesting place where there's a lot of people that want to take advantage of guys. They want to use guys to make money. They want to use guys to, you know, they, they want to tell them the wrong thing so they get access to them. A lot of that stuff happens. And that's a lot of the stuff that I had to sort of fight with um, and help players because it was hard. You know, players were saying, hey, you know, this guy, you gave me 50, gave me some money and now I should listen to him. And I think one of the biggest things with athletes um, that, that I talk to, and this is for you guys too, is when you're getting advice, whether it's about money, whether you're picking a high school, picking a college, you know, you better know that person that's telling you that advice, where they're coming from. You better know the incentives. You better know if they're telling you that stuff because they care about you or because somebody else is giving them a couple of dollars to push you one way. So that's the one thing is, is uh, you know, I talk about all my players and guys that I know, you know, even if it's your cousin or somebody you ain't heard from in a long time, you better figure out why they're telling you to choose that agent or why they're telling you to go to that school. Because, because a lot of stuff's being changed hands, and that's another important thing. Um, I think the other thing with athletes that I want to talk about sort of briefly, and that's a few questions that I'll get to, is um, guys like LeBron and Chris Paul, who, are, you know, I talked to Chris Paul about two days ago. He's a good friend of mine. Um, they're doing, which is right, is, you know, they are learning how the game works. So you want to be a successful athlete, you better know what's going on off the court or off the field. That off the, you know, how the business of this stuff is going to help you be successful or is going to hold you back. So learning that stuff is, is really, really important. And you can also bring your people with you. So like, you know, LeBron's got his crew. He's got Rich Paul, who's an agent. He's got Maverick Carter. Um, so, so you can bring your crew with you, but you better do it strategically, right? So no one knows this story. And I do a quick story about LeBron and how, and how he built his team before I jump into some of these questions. Um, so what LeBron did, when LeBron signed at a high school, he signed with a big agency. And, and what he did was he told that agency, he said, listen, you want me to sign there, you better hire my friend. And you better make sure you ain't hiring my friend for the mail room. My friend, my friend this, is, this is Rich Paul. He's going to be working with my agent every single day, learning every single thing. And then they said, okay, cool. We'll sign. We, we want you. Because listen, you guys, as athletes, when you start making these decisions, you're going to have some leverage and you better use it. So you ain't going to have it for a long time. So, so he used that, got his friend a job. Rich Paul learned how the business worked. And then once he learned how the business worked, they left. They started their own agency. So you can use, you know, your opportunity to help, op help get opportunities for other people. And when you do that, that's how you grow and build. So, you know, whatever your next step is going to be, investment banking, real estate development, if, you have, if you're fortunate enough to go play college or play pro, you know, use your opportunity to learn and, and to grow your toolbox, but you better be taking care of the people around you too in a way that's not just money. So I'm not saying if you, you get a check and send it back. What I'm saying is if, if you get invited to dinners, if you get opportunities, you know, everybody on, you know, on this call, I challenge you, man, grab some friends, tell them they should be a part of this too. You know, start opening up opportunities for, for people around you. Then when y'all make it to the level that y'all want to be at, all of a sudden you got a group of everybody that knows what they're doing. Now you got a team that can really hit it. Um, so, so next question is, uh, Roberto, uh, would it be worth to, do, worth to do investment banking on the side, sports or not? Because it's dependent for both. So, so I think it depends on what level, right? So, um, so, so I think, you know, if in high school and college, um, you know, investment banking is one of those things that that's tough, it's time consuming, but there's some things in investment banking that you can do that are not full time. So, you know, there's investment banks everywhere. So there's big and there's small ones. So, you know, if you're interested in that finance while you're being an athlete, so ask questions, pick up the phone and say, hey, you know what? I have this time commitment for sports, but I'm really interested in investment banking. So I want to try that too. People will be flexible for you and they'll help you if you show the initiative because you can do both. And you have to make it work for you. It may be hard because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Um, but I think it would be worth it to do it. And, and, and you know, if you, if you do it the right way, you ask the right questions and you're, 
and you're authentic, you know, people will give you an opportunity. They'll say, oh, yeah, you know, we'll make it work for you uh, so you can learn some of the skill set. Um, so from, from, from me, so uh, when you're investment banking, you're with your team by yourself. Um, so investment banking, so it's a little bit of both, right? So you have a team you work with. So you have, when I was an associate, I had two or three analysts that I work with. I had one VP and I had a, a director and a managing director that I work with. So you work on a team. But what happens is in the same way that, you know, if you're playing, you know, you're playing football or playing basketball, you're a team, but you got individual things that you got to get done. And if you do that stuff really well, then the team benefits. So that's how it works in, in, in investment banking. So you got a team of people around you that are all working um, to go in the same direction, but you got tasks that you got to get done. They'll say, hey, you know, you do this for the next three hours. And when you come back and, and have that stuff done, that helps the team be better. So it's a, a, a mix of both. Um, so, so, so some, some, some other questions you guys um, sort, of, sort of may have. Um, if you, anybody else have any, any more questions, any, any live questions? So, um, okay, so somebody asked me, um, do you have to start as an, an analyst before becoming an investment banker? So, uh, no, you don't. So there's different levels, but it depends, it depends on where you go, where you, where you sort of come from. So if you come right out of college, you start as an analyst. So that's how it works. Right out of college, you start as an analyst. So for me, I never did investment banking after college. After college, I worked for a little bit, and then I went to business school. So sometimes if you go to graduate school um, or you have some work experience, you could come in as an associate. So, and if you have even more work experience, you know, you're a little older, you can come in as a manager director. So they'll allow you to come in at different levels. The only thing is once you're out of school, if you don't have any work experience, you start as an analyst, and everything else depends on your work experience. Yep, so, so somebody uh, asked, yeah, so everyone has their own separate tasks but they all contribute to the unit. Yep. So, so investment banking, it's, it's a mix of team and individual and, and the better you are, the better the team looks, um, sort of the better everybody looks. But I'll also say to investment banking, you know, you get paid a really big bonus at the bonus at the end of the year. And that bonus is depending on how well you've done, uh, individually. So your team wants to do well. And if the team does well, the bank does well and they make more money. But at the end, they ask you, Hey, you know, what did you do? How'd you contribute? And then they say, hey, you know, we're going to give you a check for it. So I'll give you some quick examples. And I don't know the exact numbers um, that, 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 that Everett and, and Marcus talked about today for, for banking because it, it varies a little bit. Um, but, you know, there are you know, analysts that are making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year you know, at 21 years old. So first year out of college, imagine, you know, making $200,000. There are associates making $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 a year. An associate is about two, two, two and a half years after being an analyst. So imagine being 23, 24 years old and making half a million dollars a year. And then a VP is, you know, six, seven years. You know, that's 750 grand to a million at least. So imagine making almost a million dollars before, before you're 30. And this is one of those jobs where, you know, at, being a professional athlete is great. And I think it's a great opportunity. And everybody's, you know, if you can do it, do it. But, you know, being a professional athlete, you stop getting paid when you're 30, 35, when you're done playing. If you're an investment banker and you're making a million dollars a year at 28, you're going to make at least a million dollars a year uh, going up for the next 40, 50 years. There's bankers that have been working for 40, 50 years and just stacking money. It's just something to think about. Um, so uh, to sort of step back a little bit in terms of um, college. So, so the interesting thing about that is, uh, you know, people ask me a lot of times, you know, what was my focus in college? Was it finance? Um, it was a business. Um, it wasn't. I was actually a biology major in college. So I was pre-med in college. I thought I was going to be a doctor. Um, and, and I will say, you know, there's some skills. What, what I'll say to that is it, it, it does matter your major in college, but it's not, it doesn't matter as much as you think, and it matters for different reasons. So when you go to college, the important thing is skills. So a fancy major that says, hey, you know, you're a business major, that's, and that's great, but you better be acquiring some skills. Because things like investment banking, you got to have analytical skills. So you got to be good in math. Um, you know, a lot of engineers in, end up becoming investment bankers. So it's a lot of it's about skills. So if you're if you're a business major and all you took was marketing classes, you don't know how to use Excel or you know sort of add two plus two, then it's going to be very hard for you to take that business 
and go and, and go, you know, be flexible with it. So from a major perspective, you know, I was a bio major, but it was really focused on math. So I had a really good math background and that helped me succeed in finance. So I think, you know, finance is really focused on math. There's a lot of majors that use that. So when you think about your major, think about it as sort of what you want to do long term, but you better start looking at the skills that whatever that a job needs and then make sure that you use, you take those classes that align those skills. So that's, that's uh, sort of really important. Um, so, yeah, so the follow up question to that was you'd ask, can you have any major to be a, to be an investment banker? Yeah. So a lot of, you can have, you can have any major, a lot of investment banking, they, they're going to teach you stuff. So when you walk in, there's going to be eight weeks of, of training. So they're going to say for eight weeks, we're going to teach you everything you need to know, but you have to have, you know, you have to understand math. You should have, you understand strategy and business a little bit. Um, understand how to, you know, how to, the, the, uh, the inner workings of business. So it's, yeah, like I said, you, you can have just about any major, but you better have a focus on, you know, having some, some math classes, understanding finance at a high level. So getting some of the skills are going to make you really, um, really good at that job. Um, and then somebody in, uh, in, in accounting as well. Yeah. So accounting and, you know, another piece is um, accounting is another skill set that's really important. And I'll say this, you know, investment banking is a great, op is, a, is a great job. And, and I love, it and I think it's, it's a really unique opportunity. You guys should try and take advantage of it. Um, and all the skills you learn in investment banking will benefit you in anything. So accounting, finance, you know, understanding business, all that stuff. If, you be, if you're an investment bank, banker for 30 years or if you're an investment banker for two years, now if you want to go create, start your own business, all that stuff, you know, creating your own business and a lot of stuff is built on numbers. So if you can understand numbers, you can do just about anything. And even, you know, you think about sports, right? So, you know, look at some of the GMs and people that, that run the teams. It's a lot of that stuff is numbers driven. So you want to you be a GM or you want to be a CEO, you want to be a, a team owner, those skills in investment banking and accounting and understanding, you know, incomes and outcomes, inflows and outflows, you know, expenses, income, all that stuff. You know, that's the same thing as managing a salary cap. So that's the same thing as, you know, figuring out, you know, who you need on your team. So those skills you learn in investment banking, so from a finance, math, accounting, they're going to benefit you in anything that you do. And that's why a lot of people you see, if you ever look at some of these startup companies, look at, you know, people that started, you know, Instagram and, and some of these large companies, look at their backgrounds. A lot of them started in investment banking and started with some sort of finance, financial business background. So these guys that are billionaires you see on TV, you know, read the look, look at their backgrounds. You'd be surprised. So, so investment banking and things like that, are, it gives you a tools kit um that'll be benef that'll be really beneficial um sort of to everybody to, to everything else um a little bit uh and we'll talk about so so kind of stepping back you know talked about my experience in college um and managing uh you know managing studies and and and, and making sure i was looking for my long-term career but also you know having a successful career so i like i mentioned before i had a really great college career um i started i started all four years um, I, you know, I, was, I was like, I'm like top 10 scoring and rebounding in my college and, and, and had a really good career. Um, and, and managing that stuff was hard because I wanted to be the best basketball player I could be. Um, but also knew that, you know, there was other opportunities for me. So I think the biggest thing with managing that is sort of time management and sacrifice. Um, it's the same way that today you have to be doing a lot of other things. You got to understand what you want and what's important prioritizing was one of the most important things. It'd be nice where I wanted to go out and hang with my friends. And I was like, well, listen, I got, I got to finish this class and we got a 6 a.m. workout tomorrow. Or I got a final tomorrow and, and I want to go get some extra shots up in the gym. So, you know, it's all about knowing what you want. And, and, there, and there was time, you know, I'm not going to scare y'all and say there wasn't time that I had fun and was able to relax. Um, but I think when it comes to high school, even, um, you know, middle school, it's about prioritizing. You know, the things that you want, everybody else wants. Everybody wants to be good. Everybody wants to make a lot of money. Everybody wants to be successful. So what are you doing differently than everybody else? And a lot of that is just prioritizing what's the most important thing uh, for you. And, and then um, the other thing I'll sort of transition is, you know, I, I run my own business now. So, you know, I, I started my own company. And, and for me, you know, I, I was an investment banker. I worked with players. I thought I had good background. I had tools to be able to do it myself. And, and for me, I started this company because... Um, I wanted to help players in a way that I didn't think anybody else was. So, you know, I had players that I knew that were smart players that were going to take advantage of. And, and, I, and I thought, 
you know, I, I, I could really be positive and impact that. And I also knew that I was unique and had a skill set and I would work harder than people. So for me, you know, starting my own business was about, you know, taking a swing for the fences. You know, I, I'd, I'd done the investment banking thing. I worked these large companies. I had relationships. I built a toolkit along the way. I could have never started my own business 10 years ago. You know, if I wasn't an investment banker first, if I didn't go work at these different places, I wasn't ready for that. And I'm not saying, you know, don't st go start your own business right away. But the thing that helped me was I did a lot of different things um, that gave me the toolkit uh, that helped me to be able to prepare for, um, to help me prepare for, for, for what I'm doing now. Um, so, um, so I think we have any other questions. Um, um, let's see, sorry, I'm just going to read, read through some of these questions real quick. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Let me just give me one second, guys. Anybody have a question they want to ask out loud? So you, you guys don't want to be nervous. Anything you guys want to ask out loud? I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm not sure how many people in the, in the audience are awake right now, but <laughs> you have been listening. Um, thank you so much. Powerful. This is powerful. And I know at your age, your level, um, it may not be something you guys are actively thinking about right now, but it's important that you recognize what this is and you recognize that seeds are being planted and that, yeah, this is, this is, this is incredible information. I just want to thank you personally. Well, I appreciate that. You know, you know, for me, it was like, I, you know, like I said, you know, my, my learning a lot came from, didn't really come from, you know, just going to the library and grabbing a book and reading these different careers. Uh, I mean, my mind came from people that look and felt like me that were doing things that I didn't know existed. So I would see, and I'm big on like, you know, there's a lot of technology now, right? So podcasts, there's a lot of stuff. So I'd say, you know, find your favorite people, your favorite businesses and, and find podcasts about them or find articles about them. Um, for me, when I started to see like a billionaire like Robert Smith, who was an investment banker, um, and I was like, okay, and, and he sort of started off being an engineer and, and, and was people told him no and he didn't look and feel like you know didn't look and feel like everybody else so I'd see people like that doing things um, and that's how that, that sparked a lot of stuff in me um, because I for me I'm a, I'm a visual learner I got to see it and I got to see people sort of you know out there doing it opposed to just someone you know telling me you know go read this 20 pages about it so so that was that was really important um, uh, to me and the other thing I want to elaborate is another question that popped up so I want to elaborate is um, the sort of the, the, the business that we have now. So we're actually, we're not financial advisors to, to professional athletes, we're actually teachers. So what we do is we talk to guys, we teach them. So on Wednesday night, I had a call. Um, so Chris Paul called me, he was like, hey, can you do, can you do like 10 players um, that are all friends with me in the NBA? Can we do a Zoom like this? And we can just ask you questions about finance. And, um, and we did that call. So, so my company now, we're teachers. My whole goal is can we, help players learn about the business. But the same way that you guys are learning about this stuff right now, you'd be surprised. A lot of professional athletes are doing the same thing. So I have the same type of conversations with guys you see on TV that make $20 million. I say, listen, you know, when I'm done playing, what do I do next? How do I go find a job? You know, what is, what is investment banking? I've had a conversation with 10 NBA guys that says, what is investment banking? I see it on TV. I watch these shows. What is it and what do I need to do to be there? And you know, real estate development, venture capital, all these things that are out there, you know, in the same way that you guys are learning about them, there are players that are top 10 NBA players that are picking up the phone and saying, I'm gonna be done playing ball when I'm 30 and there's a lot more living I have to do. So how do I find a career that fits my skill set and that I like and that can, you know, give me some longevity? You know, there's a guy, there's a football player, I don't know if you guys remember, named Justin Tuck. So Played for the Giants, um, went to Notre Dame. He's a good friend of mine. He works at Goldman Sachs now. He's a vice president at Goldman Sachs. Wow. Because what he did was while, while he was playing football, he reached out to people. So he's playing for – so you guys all have an opportunity. As, as When you're current students and athletes, you can pick up the phone and call anybody. People will have a conversation with you. When you are done, they're going to think you want a job. And all of a sudden, they're going to say, all right, now you're calling me because you want something. So Justin was playing for New York Giants. And he said, listen, while I'm playing, I can meet anybody. I can pick up the phone and call people. And he did that. 
and he got done playing. He ended up getting his MBA um, and, and now you know, works at Goldman Sachs. But he did that because he's like, I built relationships. And he's like, and no one else is building relationships. They're always focused on one thing. So, you know, it's important to think about the position you guys are at right now where you can pick up the phone and touch base with anybody you want to and be real. Listen, I want to learn about what you do. I want to learn a little bit about how I can get to the next level um, because people are willing to help you if you're being real. And, and, and a lot of people aren't. Everybody's, you know, a lot of people coming at people for angles and what can I get from them? So if, you, if you're real, um, that, that'll open, a, that'll open a, a door. Leveraging your position. I wanted, to, um, I wanted to speak or follow up. You had mentioned um, the power of being authentic um, and how you bring that to whatever career field that you're going to enter into. Um, I wanted to ask you guys for the kids, um, or I wanted to ask you for them, um, how do you show up authentically in your work and just how does that tie like into what you do, you know, so that way they can start thinking about how they can add their mm -hmm. flavor to whatever they do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think the first thing is step back and, you know, understand, you know, what's authentic to you. Right. So it's this mix of like, what do you care about? What are you passionate about? And then the last thing is why do you care about that stuff? So I think that's, that, that's the first step. You got to sit, look in the mirror and say, all right, listen, like, you know, who am I? What do I care about? And why do I care about it? So, one, so get that thing first. Um, and then once you do that, when you're showing up at work or at school or all that stuff, you know, look for opportunities. You got to go search for them because you know, there's things out there and you've got to raise your hand and say, hey, listen, like, you know, look for the things that, that will allow you to show that passion and, and that authenticity because everybody can talk about it. It's easy to talk about it. I can, hey, you know what? I really care about helping people. I said, yeah. okay, but are you helping people? So if you, once you find the, that thing you're passionate and authentic about, look for opportunities to execute it. Because people, you'll be surprised. Even the people that are not directly around you will start noticing. And then when they notice that, that's going to speak more to who you are and how authentic you are and what your values are than you just saying them. And the more people notice, and the, the people that will notice, you won't even notice that they're noticing. So you'll just be like, all right, you know, whatever, you're, you're doing your thing. You'll start to build a brand. And now when you build that brand, opportunities that you care about will start coming to you but you got to go pre proactive in them first so so that's my thoughts and there's, there's a there's a few more questions so a lot of people keep asking me about stocks so um so so uh, i'll be wanting stocks so uh i'll yeah I'll, I'll break that down uh i'll keep it pretty high level so um so yeah so so the first question uh we talk people ask me questions about stocks and and stock dropping because of the virus and buying stocks so I'm not going to give you any sort of financial advice. So here's what I'll, <laughs> yeah, here's what I'll say about stocks. Stocks, if you want to invest in stocks, it's a really great investment. They're long-term investments. So there is no easy way to make money. So, you know, right now, there's a lot of stuff going on in the stock market. Anybody that wants to invest in stocks, you got to learn about them, understand what they are, but also understand that the people invest in, that invest in stocks are doing it for, to make money in five to 10 years. There's no quick way to do it. There's a lot of other, you know, people that say, oh, you know, the, the market's down, I'm gonna invest in stocks. You know, that, you know, we don't know how far it's going down or we don't know if it's already, the bottom is going up. So that's hard, long-term, it's a long-term investment. That's, that's sort of what I'll, uh, what, I, what I'll leave that, um, what I'll leave, what I'll leave that at. Um, and then the other thing is I'll, I'll build on that last question about, um, about sort of authenticity, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people ask me like, you know, how I got, how did I find out who I am? What is stuff I cared about? Um, you know, for me, I didn't know, you know, it, it's okay if you don't know it right now. Um, because I didn't know it. It took me time to know it. And it took me time to kind of figure out where I fit in this scope. So, uh, you know, finding out who you are is just kind of, you know, continue to experience everything that you can. So meet as many people as you can, try as many different things. You'll start to see the things you care about and the things that you don't, and you'll start to see where you fit and where you don't. But it, that stuff takes time. So I'll give you sort of a quick sort of background on how I kind of figured this out, right? So, so my dad played football. He played for a long time, but then when he got done, I sort of realized people started treating you differently when you're not a football player anymore or a basketball player. So they were like, all the opportunities and the friends and stuff, people were like, oh, you don't play no more? Oh, no. So they kind of threw him by the wayside. But he also treated me differently. And I was like, all right, this is, this is strange, right? So, so I, I saw that younger. Now, I didn't know that that would lead me to this now. Um, but I saw that younger. Then when I went to college and I was playing ball, but I was also smart and doing well in school, people were taking it. People were like, all right, ain't no way you can be smart and be, be a ball player. 
And I was like, okay. And that was experience that I was dealing with. And I was like, all right. And I went to business school and people said the same thing. Oh, you play, oh, how'd you get in here? So like, you know, my experience started being, okay, like I realized that people sort of looking at people that look like me, uh, you know, don't assume that there's a lot of different things that, I, that we can do. So those experiences let me be, okay, I get it. I see it. I, you know, I got a skill set. I think I'm pretty smart. And then I had players that I, I knew that were going through the same thing. So I started to feel from a young age, I was like, okay, like these, these things that I'm going through, I want to help more people. Um, so, so that's how I sort of got to, to, to who I was. Um, but, but it takes some time because I didn't know that until I was 30, man. When I was, when I was, when I was 30, I was like, all right, I'm going to go be a, I'm going to go be a private equity investment banking guy and make $30 million and blah, blah. And then I was like, you know, and, and it took me some hard lessons, but I also realized that people will tell you this, um, a lot and you probably won't believe them until you go through it, but I'm going to tell you this anyway. Um, find something that you enjoy doing. And if you do it really well, you can make more money than anybody else anyway. So uh, yeah, I got, I got caught up early trying to be like, all right, well, I'm gonna go take this job because it pays more. Um, but I, but some jobs I took, I didn't really like. So when I realized it was like, okay, if you take what you're passionate about and you do it better, you can make as much money as anybody. And that takes some time. So as you're finding these things that you care about, there's going to be bumps. But if you, if you get better and you do it better, then all the bumps don't really matter because they won't affect you because you'll be doing it so well anyway, it won't matter. Like, you know, you know, lawyers, doctors, whatever, everybody's always, oh, you know, it's too many of those. You don't need those. If you do it better, it doesn't matter. Um, another question, somebody asked me, okay, um, how athletes are taken advantage of and what's it like being the good guy in sports? That's a really good question. Uh, so a lot of people, and this, this is not an athlete thing, this is an everybody thing. You know, when it comes to money and finance, like you guys asked me some questions about stocks, right? Um, when it comes to money and finance, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So, and there's a lot of people that make money if they can take advantage of people. And, and that's just how, you know, a lot of stuff in finance works. So it, it rolls over to the athlete world as well. So it's, it's you know, young, young athletes that just get, you know, just make a lot of money. Parents maybe, maybe never made a lot of money. Um, and, and they're figuring it out. And then someone comes in and says, let me, let me do it all for you. So that's why I really focus on the education and empowering because I know if I can help people understand this stuff from a good place, they'll, uh, they'll start to make the right decisions. So that's a lot what that happened. And what it's like being a good guy in sports, um, it's hard. You know, I've had, it's hard sometimes because, um, you know, you see people that are doing the wrong things that still, you know, that still make money, that still do it. Um, but for me, I know, you know, mine's about longevity. So I'm going to be around for a while. So I don't take shortcuts in this thing. So I know that, you know, some of the conversations I have, people don't believe me. Sometimes people will choose, hey, I'm going to go work this guy, even though you said it's not the right person for me. Um, you know, I think when you approach anything, it's about longevity. If you can be around for a long time, you know, you'll end up winning. Because when you take shortcuts and you're doing the wrong things, it may not get you today or tomorrow, but it's going to get you at some point. That's in anything you do. If you, you know, you can cut corners today, but it will come back and bite you. And by the time it bites you, it might be too late for you to turn back around. So doing the right thing early is going to just build sort of a long-term opportunity. Um, and you're going to see people around you that maybe are getting ahead of you. And you might say, hey, it might be easier to do this thing. But if you keep at it and you're authentic and you do the right thing, um, you'll eventually catch them and you'll lap them and you'll, and you'll be doing it for a long time when they may, maybe have had success for a short, kind of a short burst. Um, so I think that's all the questions on the chat. Um, so I'm trying to think any, any other, any other things that you have to say. So, so the other thing I'll say is, um, use your resources. So, you know, you guys got a great opportunity here, um, to, to really have people in your corner that are giving you stuff, um, giving you opportunities, giving you chances to learn, putting people in front of you. The you know, NFL player just jumped on the phone. I jumped on the, the zoom about an hour ago, um, this morning to talk to you guys. So you better use that stuff because everybody's not getting them um, and they're not gonna be around forever. So, you know, I would love to, to, to sort of think through, yeah, I'd love you guys to think through, um, you know, take advantage of everything that you can right now that's gonna help you be better for tomorrow. Because, you know, at some point, some of this stuff people gonna start trying to charge you for. So all of a sudden, you know, sometimes you get free advice only for so long. So, so you better, you better be taking advantage of it. Uh, so. Um, 
So, so um, the other thing, somebody asked me, what does a real estate developer do and how do you become one? So this is, I'll, I'll give a kind of quick answer there too. So this is an investment banking session, but I'll give a quick answer. So a real estate developer, what they do is, so you guys are all in LA, right? LA? Yeah. LA area, okay. So yeah. like, so you guys, you guys have been to like downtown LA, like the Staples Center, right? That area? Yes. yes. So yeah. like all that stuff around there, a lot of stuff there is new. So a lot of those new stores and those new restaurants and all that stuff hasn't been, it wasn't around for a long time. So what a real estate developer says is they go, okay, now this is downtown LA and, and they got the Staples Center right there. There needs to be more hotels here, more restaurants here, more, you know, more hotels, more, you know, kind of movie theaters, more entertainment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go develop this area. Like Magic Johnson is a real estate developer. He goes and says, you know, there should be more movie theaters here. So Magic Johnson, there should be more movie theaters in this area. So they go develop real estate. They put new things in new places and they make money from that. So they say, okay, there was no stores here before, but we know there's more people going to be coming to the games. We'll put up more stuff here. We develop it. We get investors to help us create it. And then when it blows up, we make money. And now all of a sudden this area is worth 10 times more. It was worth, you know, in, in five to 10 years. That's what real estate developers do. They help develop areas. Um, and make money from it. So they, whether it's stores, new houses, you know, new hotels, new casinos, that's what they do. So any more questions, guys? You know, I, I appreciate it here. I appreciate you guys taking some time. I know it's been sort of a, a long morning for you guys, but um, but I appreciate you guys, you know, being asking good questions, being attentive. Um, and, and, and this is, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed sort of getting a chance to talk to you guys and share my experiences. And I hope that, I hope it was helpful. And I also hope, you know, as you sort of thinking through this stuff, you know, realize that you got a really cool opportunity now um, to be athletes, but also use athletes, to use your athletes to open a bunch of doors and, and sort of raise up. And then, and then, you know, I think about the idea of like, you know, take care of your friends and your family and all that stuff. You can do it in a bunch of different ways. Um, so make sure, you know, use these resources here and don't be scared to reach out to people. Um, don't be intimidated. You know, pick up the phone, send an email, send a text message. Don't be afraid to ask questions because there's no dumb questions. And, and you guys, you know, you guys, the more you do that, the more you'll figure out what you like and what you don't like. And the earlier you figure that out, the more success you'll have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, immensely powerful and useful information. Okay. Thank uh, you. I've un wow. Thank I've you. unmuted everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, we just got idea. Mike, you got a contact number? Thanks. Uh, I do. I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat, and I'll put my email in the chat too. Uh, yeah, you absolutely. Can we all just uh, say thank you, or even do a boss clap? Boss clap. Thank you, man, that was powerful, man. Boss. Oh. <laughs> Harder over online, but in person, the boss top is powerful too. Harder online. But his I'm name is. Y'all want to check out the IG? We do some cool interviews with athletes. Here is his name. Yeah, please, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. I've been thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, can we meet everybody else again, up again? Okay, uh, I will. Mike at. So they said a token. But I can't hear. Hey, Toba. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got uh, we got one guest, uh, Marvin Bishop. He's just gonna try to summarize everything we just heard real quick. Marvin, are you there? Oh yes, sir. Let's get it. All right, hold on. Let me uh, find Marvin and I'll uh, bring him up. Okay. Stay on, guys, just for a couple more minutes and then we let you guys go. All right, Marvin, you got it. I can't find you, though. There's no video. Marvin? Is Marvin Bishop here? I, Everett, um, I, don't, I don't think Marvin, I, I, he's on, but he never, uh, he never. He said, it was, he, said he had, um, I don't know how to change the screen, but. Uh... Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think that's him. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me find him.
Oh, okay. There you go. Mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? All right, you can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. I was looking at your name, okay. but uh, then I yeah. realized you were somewhere else. You got uh, it. Right. Hey, hey, let, let me say this to you guys. First of all, Everett, you hit it right on the point. Uh, I, I guess speaker, he boss, right? Sure. Uh, the business of sports and beyond, he is, he is boss. And I was, you know, I come here thinking I'm going to say something, but I got a whole page of notes here. And, and just very briefly, I was looking at the guys who were in the audience. Some of them were wide awake and some was kind of dozing. But let me say this to you. What separates the great from the average is information and how to utilize it. I was almost 40 years old before I even heard of an investment banker because I heard of some people making $100 million in 10 months. And the only thing I knew, I knew some of the top street people, but they wasn't getting that kind of money, right? And, 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 and let me say this to you. When I thought about listening to him, he said some very important things. And number one is this. We talked about this before, Everett. It's called a who piece. Make sure you guys pay attention to who you're listening to and always ask yourself this. Do they have any evidence that they know what? they're talking about. And I have no question this young man did. So that's okay. very important. Number two, I think what he really was saying to us is this, that there is nothing that we can't do if we open up our imagination and we're willing, if we want to do it, and then the other piece, if we're willing to pay the price. He, he reiterated over and over again that to be, to be successful in his field, that there was a lot of money, but you had to be willing to pay the price to get it. So I'm sure a lot of folks heard about all them numbers and the guy who made more money than LeBron, but the question you should ask yourself, am I willing to pay the price for my success, be whatever it is? Even it's going to have to be paid. But more importantly, guys, let me tell you this. Getting into this new era, did you young guys, required that you be effective to even get in the door. But that won't keep you there. What's going to keep you there is a thing called greatness, which means this, that you're going to have to have a new mindset, you're going to have to have a new skill set, and you're going to have to have a new tool set. And so, Everett, let me commend you because what you're doing is giving them the things that they're going to need to go any direction that they want to do. But at the end of the day, let me close with this, that in the five pieces of the life puzzle, the first piece of the life puzzle is this, guys. It's your philosophy. That's going to be the foundation to wherever you're going in your life. And, and, and see, when you're with boss, the, the philosophies, right, that's what you know. The philosophy is this. First of all, there's no We're going to go the extra mile. We're going to learn from defeat. Even our speaker told you how important it was to be willing to fall down. How, how, how did your success is not probably going to be found in any comfort zone. It's over there where it's hard is where the greatness is. Nobody's going to pay you that kind of money for something easy. They're going to pay you because you went over there and got in the risk zone. So anybody who looking at something say that's hard, that's where you want to run to, where, where it is hard. So work on your philosophy and understand that boss really is laying the foundation for you to have the kind of philosophy that in this 21st century, you're going to be able to meet the demands, which is demands of greatness. And, and, and let me say this to all of you who are there. One of the things that he spoke about was this, that don't think you're the only one that's going to want to make a lot of money. Don't think you're the only one that's going to want a, 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 a 500 bins with some 20s on it. It's going to be a lot of people. So you're going to have to do something that will separate yourself. Is what Kobe Bryant did when he went from 7.30 in the morning workouts to 4.30 separation. But for all of you guys who boss, you've already put your... Cutting out, Marvin. You're cutting out. All right. Well, Marvin is... Got a lot of static, Mark. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, stay yes, sir. right there. Okay. Well, I, I was getting excited here, so I got this little raggedy mic on. So let me say this. At, at the end of the day, 
This is the deal. It's called the art of war. It says this, that every battle that was ever won was won before you ever fight it. So I guess what's, what is being said is this, do your homework, and whatever you're going to do and win that later on in life, you're, you're going to win it now. It's not going to win it when you get there. You're going to win it right now. Hey, with that, God bless you. And remember, from, from the Marvin Bishop, which I'm affectionately known as this, the only difference between a big shot and a little shot is that the big shot and Uh, now I want to God know bless you guys. Thing. I didn't. Oh, 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 I didn't get the difference between the big shot and the little shot. Well, a big shot is just a little shot that kept shooting. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we get a round of applause through the mic? This has been quite the meeting. Oh my God, we are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. We are immensely blessed to be in the presence of some just incredible people. I hope you guys were sponges and we're soaking all of this information up. Um, yeah, it's been incredible. Do you have anything else to say, Marcus, before I transition into some uh, homework? No, no, I'm, I'm good. Well, I just want to say for, for the for the gas, uh, one of the things we could do uh, is we could get gas on like every Saturday. We don't have to do it once a month because we got we can take advantage of this downtime. All you guys got to do is log on. So. So the so the boys get with your folks, email me and let you let us know we can have this on a regular basis to bring a whole superstar presentation, have all kinds of guys all over the world sharing with you guys. Make it happen. At least for an hour on every Saturday. Let's make it happen. Okay. Um and so on that note, we have uh given this downtime and all this free time that we have, we got some homework. Um, I got a boss work. No, no, no boss work now. We're actually, it's mentally boss today, Me mentally and economically boss. So the homework is, I'm going to write it down. Um, actually, I'll ask, ask if everyone actually takes a piece of paper out or use your phone to write this down. That way, um, follow up email is not you have the information. Um, so, based off what we've heard today about financial risk making and um, some of the other things, I want every single person to pick a career that you're interested in. Um, I invite you to go outside of the box. Don't pick something necessarily that has to do something with sports or the academic field that you want to go in, but something that you're curious about. I want you guys to exercise curiosity. I want you guys to pick a career you're interested in. Um, I want you to, again, we're talking about showing up as your authentic self, whatever field you're in. I want you guys to really go inwards and figure out the things that you're really interested in that makes you curious. And I want you to find a career um, research its salary, research the skill sets required within that career, and then why you feel like you would succeed and elevate in that career itself. So I just want one paragraph. You know, I don't, I'm not going, I'm not going to give you guys a three, two-page essay, but um, I do want you guys to be thinking about this. And with this downtime, we have the opportunity to grow, to elevate. What you pay attention to grows. So, wow. What was the second one? How will we get this paragraph to you? We can, if you guys all have computers, um, just type it up, and then um, I'll get a follow-up email with like an email for you guys to send it to or a Gmail. I'm gonna send out a follow-up email to all the guys that only here, so I know who's dead, and I'll copy you, Toba. And okay, excellent. Uh, Toba, excellent. What yeah. was the second? What was the second one? So it's it's salary. How much money are you gonna make from the job? The skill sets required within the job for you to succeed, and then going back to how you show up authentically. Um, kind of speak in that paragraph about um, things that you're curious about, things that interest you, and how you can bring a piece of yourself to that field. It will really help you elevate in it. Uh, Atoba, can I add one thing to that? Sir, sure, yes, sir. Um, find out what are the requirements to be in that career. What, is, what, what does it take to be in that career, the career that you're looking at? Education, experience. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Going back into the skill sets. Yeah. Uh, what are the requirements? Uh, the time frame in which you're going to be able to elevate within that job. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys, but I'm going to be reading every single one of them and giving you guys feedback. That's my promise. So, um, Atoba. Yes. What's that noise? Um, I don't. Someone's mic is is buzzing. Elijah. That's Elijah's voice, huh? I remember. It's kind of like 
you even knowing? Look at Mr. Mark. It's probably you, Elijah. Probably you. Uh-huh. Hey, we, we did a good job today, guys. Great, great job. Great job. Yeah, I want to say that I'm I'm proud of you guys. I'm really proud. Um every every uh third Saturday, every time we meet, I just I see the light in your eyes growing. I see the progression. So I want you guys to keep going. Um this week, this month. Uh, this Saturday was economically and mentally bossed. So for the rest of the week, I want you guys to really continue to ponder and focus on. Uh, what do we write about again? Paragraphs. Uh, we'll send an email out, uh, Matt. We'll send an email. Hey, hey Bishop, you there? Yeah, can you? <laughs> Let me get a picture of you, Bishop. <laughs> what, do you, what do we write about? Yeah, you write about that. But uh, we'll send a follow up email for that for the person who asked what we're writing about. But basically, you're picking a career you're interested in, researching the salary, skill set, and what you can start doing in order to see it and be in that job. How you show up with it. Um, but we'll get a follow up. All right, thank you. All right. Everybody, take care. Okay, we can log out. Bishop, I hit you up. All right. Let's move on. Yes, All right. Bye. Have a good day. All right. Donovan. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.